Howdy folks, in today's episode of Pool School, I am going to answer a question I've been getting a lot regarding inline leaf canisters or inline leaf catchers. So let's get going. Okay folks, once again, before I get started, I want to thank you for watching. I want to uh, ask you to please like this video if you do, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and please share this channel or this video or both with your friends who own their own pools who are looking to save some money servicing their pools themselves. All right, so I've had a few people, actually several people have left comments and asked me about the inline leaf canisters and that they go with pop-up systems and how they work. And so I wanted to talk with those with you about those a little bit. Um, usually there's two kinds, uh, and what, one, one thing that we're not talking about, we're not talking about the kind of stay in the pool uh, inline leaf catcher that you can attach to a vacuum hose when you have a stay in the pool vacuum. We're talking about an inline leaf canister that usually works in conjunction with a in-floor cleaning system, a pop-up system, okay? So I'm gonna go over the two different kinds and kind of give you some details about them and hopefully they'll answer your questions for you. The real main purpose of them is to stop, the, catch the debris before it gets to the pump motor that's driving that system. And so it allows you to not have to keep emptying the pump motor. Plus, most of the inline leaf catchers like this, they're bigger, so they hold a bit more debris, which is kind of nice. So let's go back to a pool and take a look at one that I've already shown you before. The first example I'm going to show you is of a inline leaf catcher that is built into the pool deck and is close to the side of the pool, one of the side walls. Just to reiterate, we are not talking about a inline leaf catcher like this that attaches to a vacuum hose for a stay in the pool vacuum, okay? I will do a video on these type of um, stay in the pool leaf canisters because I think there's some pros and cons to them and I've had some questions about those too, but that's for another video. Okay, this is one of my client's pools and I've actually used this pool, <coughs> excuse me, in a couple other examples when I talked about pop-up systems. But if you notice, this one has two pumps. The one on the left the, with the tan pump that one is a dedicated pump that drives the pop-up systems or the in-floor cleaning systems. The one on the right is the main pump that drives the water for the filter. And also, when it comes to this pump, these pumps, the one that drives the suction for the inline leaf canister or leaf catcher is the main one. And this is my adjustment valve for the suction, okay? Now, if you notice, there's only two places for suction. This one here, because I know it, is for the skimmer. This one is for a combination of both the floor drain and the side port, which I'm going to show you right now. If you notice, this is the first type of inline leaf canister or leaf catcher that I want to show you. And this is the kind that stays in that is built into the deck of your pool and sits right next to the side of your pool, okay? So one thing to keep in mind when it comes to this, I'm gonna try and, okay, is, again, has a lid. We'll talk about ex exposing the lid and, or taking the lid off in a moment. But I want you to notice that side port right there, that little white hole. That white hole is also has suction to it. So between the floor drain, which is right there, and the side port hole that goes directly into the leaf catcher that is in the side of the that is built into the deck of the pool that is what is that suction port or back at the filter is pulling from okay and then the other um, pipe as I told you is for the skimmer now you notice the majority of the suction was at the skimmer because that's kind of one that's where I want it to be and at, with the adjustment on this pool, where I have it set is sufficient, okay? So really quick, before we get into the other type, because we'll go to another house, I wanna show you how easy it is to take this one, to open this one up, okay? Obviously, lift the lid off. Be careful to, to um, check for webbing, okay? You see webbing in these, and I always say that, 
be very careful because there have been times when I put my finger in here, flipped it over, and at one time in my life, I had a black widow run across my finger. Thankfully, it didn't bite me, okay? But critters like to hide under there because it's nice and cool and damp. So be very careful when you lift that out, okay? This is the lid for it. You notice there's some tabs. See those white tabs? One there, one there, one there, and one there. Those tabs hold the lid in place. And so basically to undo it, or to take it off, you, you, you turn it and then lift it out. And you'll notice the lid has, this is a little, one's a little cracked, but it still works. It has these gaps, all right? That's what goes down. You line them up with the tabs so that the gap is there. You push it down and then you just turn it and it'll lock in place, all right? And even when this lid gets old, like this one, it doesn't have all the little catches, it still works. I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see, see they have the raised lips? That's what those things are supposed to catch on. So as you put it down, if you see that lip right there, if I push it down into the sump and then I turn it clockwise, It'll kind of stick right into that. It'll lock and get stuck on that tab. And that's how it locks down. It's not a tight fit. You're not looking for a tight fit, okay? It just locks down in place like this. Now, in order to empty it, it's very simple. Inside there's a blue mesh netted basket. Most of the ones that are in the side of the pool that are in the deck have a, have a net like this, as opposed to hard plastic, okay? And you'll see that in a moment. And you notice, excuse me, there's all the debris that gets collected. Obviously, I'm going to empty this. Um, right now, I'm going to put it here, and then I'm going to put it in my net. But you can see, it works pretty good. We've had a couple storms, and that's knocked some debris in the pool. To put it back in, I push it down and set it in. And there's a little lip that it sits on, and that's all I do. And then I put the lid back on, straight down fit it into the tabs, right? And then I turn it clockwise till it clicks in place. Put the lid back on, and that's it. So I'm not a really big fan of those netted kind, um, just because those nets tend to get old and tear, and it's kind of tough to find them. Um, so that's my comment on that. Now, again, that's pretty much how the one that sits in the deck works. Now let's go look at one that actually is in line with the rest of the equipment. Okay, now that we have seen an example of an inline leaf canister that sits in the deck, let's look at one that's, that is over by the pump and the regular plumbing over by the filter and everything. Okay, so I'm in the backyard of one of my clients' pools and pardon the dogs, they got loud dogs. This is an example of a inline leaf canister for a pop-up system that is built over by the equipment. So if you notice, this one is pretty clearly marked. Here's the suction side of the pump, right? And you'll notice that there is a pipe for the skimmer. There's a pipe for the main drain, okay? And this is the leaf vac. So this allows you, this valve allows you to adjust between the main drain and the skimmer. And the main drain is where your leaves and debris are going to hopefully get sucked into this canister. Again, this is very similar to the kind that is in the deck of a pool, except this one sits outside over by the equipment. And then the lid's a little different. It has a typical lid like a lot of, uh, a lot of them do, so they're very simple. But again, this is the adjustment valve. Most of these types of systems, whether it's a deck mounted leaf canister or a plumbing or filter mounted canister like this one, they're gonna have some kind of adjustment for the suction. However, not always, but it's been my experience that most of them do between the skimmer and the floor drain. The one thing you notice also, if I went out to the pool, and I'm not going to, but I'll just let you know, there is no side port, suction port, like you find in the ones that are built into the deck. So this one is just relying on the floor drain to suck the debris, okay? And you'll notice that I have very little suction, this is the off, I have very little suction to the skimmer and the majority of it to the main drain because this particular um, system needs that, okay? 
to open it is very simple. You just, you make sure your system's not gonna turn on and you just, I'm gonna use my knee to help me. You just twist it counterclockwise, it just breaks free and it lines up here so it opens. You just pull the lid off. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, if you notice right here, is an O-ring. This O-ring you want to inspect once in a while when you empty it. Make sure it's not cracked, make sure it's not broken, and you might want to lubricate it, okay? Um, you notice I get some black on me. That's a sign that this O-ring is starting to wear out a little bit. And um, what I do is I use a heavy duty silicone spray, like an industrial type, to lubricate it, and that helps it seal better. And this one, again, you can really see really well how this works. There's the hole for the suction, and all the water comes in there. And then it flows down through the bottom, and it goes around the pipe, up back through this pipe, and into the pump. Okay, so all this debris that's in there, I'll flip it over, you can see. Okay, all that debris that just came out, that got trapped in this instead of going into the pump basket. So that's kind of nice and helpful. And again, I also like these plastic baskets. Um, because they seem to work, they, they, they hold up longer. Those fabric ones tear pretty easy, and if they get a lot of debris in them, uh, they tear a lot easier, and they're not as durable. So, to put it back, again, you just make sure that that O-ring is seated in that rim, okay, in this particular type. You see these little tangs right here? I want to make sure that those line up with this here, and I'm put it on top, and line it up, like that, just lined up. See that? And then I'm just going to twist it shut. And that's it. Then I can fire it up and it'll prime. And we're back in business. Now there is a third kind of option when it comes to the inline uh, leaf canisters and it's usually um, connected to a leaf canister that's in the pool deck like the first example I showed you. But the difference is the lid. Now it's, it's an older model and so I don't really have any um, examples in my own clients' pools because it's just so old that most of them don't have them. Um, but one of my subscribers um, had a situation with the lid of theirs and they couldn't get it off and they were concerned about it. And they sent me a picture of it. So I wanna show you with a picture of the, what, what he sent me so you can see it and then you can know about that lid too because those can be tricky because they can get stuck on. So I'm gonna show you a picture of it, describe it a little bit, and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so this is an example of one of the older style lids for those in-deck, in-line leaf canisters. You notice this, this uh, subscriber sent this picture to me and it's basically a very f a flat, clear plastic lid with a handle in the middle, if you notice that metal handle in the middle. It seats into the into the sump similarly um, as the like the basket. It actually seats into a thing instead of having tabs that it locks into, like the the first example I showed you in this video. It actually seats into a an opening, sets down onto a rim, and then in that lid is also an O-ring. You can see on the black around the clear side on the outside of that. You can see black, that's an O-ring, which needs to be lubricated. This one actually has been in there for so long and not taken out that it's pretty much stuck in there. And so I had to uh, uh, suggest that maybe he either uh, use some force to, to pull it out, maybe like a pry bar, or he might even have to break it and then replace it. But um, you'll notice at two o'clock in the picture and seven o'clock on the upper right-hand corner and lower left-hand corner are tabs. And those tabs just turn and that's how you lock the lid in place to take it out or hold it down. Everything else inside pretty much works the same as the other deck version that I showed you. Um, but again, um, in this particular case, it's really important that you keep that O-ring lubricated and clean and that area clean. You know, there's just a lot of dirt around there. Well, that stuff can get gummed in there. And it's important that you clean it fairly regularly so it doesn't get stuck on there for lack of removing. Alrighty gang, so there you have it. Um, hopefully this lesson made sense about inline leaf canisters that are built into systems with in-floor 
pop-up cleaning systems, okay? Uh, I hope it made sense. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can put them in the comments section below this video, or you can email me directly, and my email address will appear at the bottom of the screen here, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. I want to thank you for watching. I want to remind you again to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this channel with your friends who have pools as well. And as always, you can notice it's cooling off out here even in Arizona, and as fall is coming, sometimes people get a little bit lax, but always remember, you own a pool. So always have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids around water. Happy fall, and I'll see you next time.